What a wonderful world this would be If we all open our eyes to see He is all that we need right now And we can all come together somewhere Somehow His door is open no matter who you are Just take the first step you'll see it's not so far Down this road that holds all the answers Open your heart to something greater His holy book speaks pure and true And always tells us what we must do His last prophet was sent as a guide An example by which we abide There is salvation for those who seek To find the one and only source of peace And understanding of why we are here Who created us who we must fear So what a wonderful world this will be If we all open our eyes to see And the cloud of the sun Will carry you what is Islam? Islam is an Arabic word coming from the root Sin Lam Mim, pronounced Sum. When it reaches the perfected state of Islam, it means surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity, and peace. These actions describe the proper behavior of the one who believes in Almighty God and is surrendering their will to God's will. And they are submitting to God's commandments. They are doing this in true obedience and in sincerity. Even if no one were watching, they would still do it and they would do it in peace. All of these words comprise the meaning of Islam. So if someone surrenders and submits in obedience and sincerity and in peace to God, in Arabic we would call them a Islam. We'll carry you and the cloud of Islam. We'll carry you. All of the prophets or messengers of God have come with the same message that our purpose in life is to worship God alone without any partners. The first commandment in the book of Exodus mentioned in chapter 20 and the first commandment in the Ten Commandments mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy is no different than the commandment mentioned in the New Testament in Mark chapter 12 and it's no different than the commandment mentioned in the Quran in Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4. All of these have one single message. Do not set up partners with Almighty Allah in worship. Rather, worship Him alone with no other gods beside Him. The quote from the Old Testament says, more or less in English, Thou shalt not have any other gods beside me. In the New Testament, the quote is, Know, O Israel, the Lord your God is one Lord. You have to worship Him or love Him with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength. And in the Quran, in Surah 4, we find that God says that He will not forgive anyone to set up partners with Him in worship. But anything less than this, he can forgive. This is the message that was brought with all of the prophets to all of the mankind over the centuries after century after Say century. Say he's Allah the only one. Say he's Allah the only one. The word Allah in Arabic 
comes from the Arabic word Ilah. And the word Ilah actually means God, just as the word God in English is. It means something that is worshipped. The word Ilah can be made plural, Aliha, just as the word God in English can be made plural with the letter S, Gods. Additionally, the word Elah can be made female, just as the word God in English can be made goddess. However, the word Allah has no gender, neither male nor female. Also, Allah can never be made plural. The use of the word we, us, and our throughout the Quran and Holy Scriptures merely refers to Allah in the royal way as a king or a queen would use the same reference as in we decree the following declaration the word Allah literally means the only one to be worshipped because it can't be made plural and it doesn't compare to anything in the creation immediately after establishing that there is a God that he is the creator the only creator the sustainer the one who makes everything, shapes everything. He's the one who will call to account on the day of judgment for the deeds of every single human. Immediately after establishing this, it becomes necessary to establish the communication between Almighty God, Allah, and His creation. The belief in Islam is that Allah has a purpose for everything that He does. And therefore, we also as his creatures have a purpose, something that he wants us to do. How would we know what our purpose is if he did not communicate that to us? Therefore, it becomes the responsibility of Allah to establish the communication with the people. And how he communicates with us is through his messengers that he has sent. Human beings like ourselves who eat, drink, sleep, and work and toil just as we do. They would be people inspired by God, guided by God, to carry a message to us so that we would know what our purpose in life is. If you look to the Quran and you look at the teachings of Muhammad and you find that overall they support the belief in a single God and that that's the main message being offered over and over and over that there is a God giving you proof after proof after proof there is a God, there is a God, there is a God and He's one, He's one, He's one. You need to worship Him because He's going to ask you what you did with this life He gave you. There's going to be a judgment day. La ilaha illallah قل هو الله أحد لله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد. The Quran of Islam is unique in that it still exists in its original composition. It was sent down by Allah to Muhammad through the angel Gabriel. Then it was memorized by Muhammad, who could neither read nor write. So he heard and memorized the entire Quran over a period of years. He passed this memorization on to his companions, who in turn passed it on to their companions, and they in turn passed it on generation upon generation, until it reaches us today in the same pure and pristine form in the classical Arabic language as it was revealed over 1,400 years ago. Every single memorizer of the Quran today has the exact same Quran as the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him at his time. The Quran means the recitation and it is recited, memorized,